Hello, Matt Yasa here. I'm back on the torch. This is going to be my first episode for 2020. And here's the world's smallest oil lamp. It's unique for it uses a all glass wick, no cotton. I actually consider it probably one of my best discoveries so far of everything I've done. Everything else has been just kind of science experiments. But real quick, here's a uh, little rocket ship my five-year-old niece decided to draw on my wall. I haven't the heart to erase it. So I put an orange cable tie on the blow tube. That way you can tell how the tube is rotating. It's good to point out that the video is sped up a little bit, so it's not rotating quite as fast as it looks like. But what's mainly important here is the consistency of the rotation. And that's really the best way to get the most even heat, is to rotate it evenly. And so I flared open one end of the blow tube there to attach up to a slightly larger piece. The flare on that small tube will also help it from closing down during the attachment. You know, the heat will want to contract it, it's closed, and you'll end up with a restricted neck. Here's a one inch tube with a four millimeter wall thickness. I'm just pulling out the end a bit, that way I can blow out a thin bubble to rip open in the flame. So a small controlled puff here and then rip it open with a little rod. This will prevent any bubble trash. And so when you're puffing into the glass, controlling your air pressure is actually pretty difficult. As you're puffing it out thinner and thinner, the walls will kind of just give away faster and faster. It's like for the first moment, you might need a lot of pressure, almost like you're trying to inflate a balloon, but then very quickly it drops down to almost blowing soap bubbles. So you have to have a lot of control there. But for a very strong connection here, I want to heat up both sides to a very molten liquidy state and connect them together. I'll pull that connection out just a little bit, but it's important to keep both tubes in line, on axis. It's not the prettiest connection. I think I need to warm up a little bit as I get back on it, but lamp working is definitely like riding a bike. You know, you don't forget once you learn. But it's holding the weight of this tube, so it's looking like a strong attachment. I've never had too much trouble with blow tubes holding weight. I know I've had a few pulled points break off in my hand, so I pulled them out a little too thin. So I'm going down a few inches here and heating up a very hot band as I rotate around. I'm going to begin to give it a little pull and pull off a little section. Go ahead and heat the end of the tube a little bit and give it a slight puff just to even out the tip of the glass there. And so I have a rod of green exotic from Northstar. It's packed with a lot of metals which will react in the flame as I'm working with it, which should produce a lot of different colors. And just to make things quick, I'm pulling a stringer off my tube. I'll be applying color to it anyway, so why not use it to pull the stringers I need? I did do a more recent episode about pulling stringers, so you should check that out. And so I'm applying the flame in front of the stringer as I'm laying it down, and I'm kind of pushing the tube forward through the flame. Then you might notice I take some time here to push the very end, a little dot, into the glass. And it doesn't seem like much, but a little dot like that can actually lead to cracking the whole tube. It basically leaves the wall thickness a little bit uneven, and it'll contract at a slightly different rate. That, and on top of where it's placed, since it's right next to the blow tube attachment, it's already stressed right there. So it's a very common place to start getting cracks. So you have to be careful about applying color too far down, especially over that shoulder. It will definitely crack there. You also have to remember to keep reheating the piece as you're working on it. You want to keep it up towards working temperature. 
So after every line or every other line, you want to go around and reheat all the lines you've applied already. It really depends on how fast you're working and how much heat the piece is losing. And you can reheat it in the flame, but the safest default would be just to soak it in the kiln for 5 to 10 minutes. I have about 8 lines in there now. I'm going to go ahead and bring the whole thing up in temperature to get a nice even heat in there and begin to swipe on some clear glass. The clear glass should help protect the reactive glass from reacting, so you'll end up with two very distinctive tones of color. So I went ahead and preheated the rod a little bit, and now I'm swiping along in one direction against the lines. This is beginning to curve the lines, making a sort of feathered pattern. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet is I wanted to attempt this project on the centerfire alone, which is the Bethlehem Alpha. Similar to my GTT Bobcat, they are starter torches. They're both around $200 and they're often referred to as a bead torch. And so a common question is what can these bead torches do? Are they only capable of small marbles and beads? Things no larger than a cough drop? Or can they actually make a slightly large vessel? And so I'm attempting to make one of the largest vessels I've made on a smaller torch like this. I'll keep it just on the center fire. If you are interested in seeing what both stages can do, a larger vessel, you should check out the magnet apparatus video. I blew out a very large sphere in three sections using the full force of the Bravo flame. And I dropped a tube larger than this one into it in order for some magnet experiments. Now I'm gonna wait for it to stop glowing and then pop it in the kiln for about 10 minutes. If you put it in the kiln too hot, it can begin to slump and lose its shape. It's kind of flatten out. Too late, however, and it might crack. So it's kind of a matter of timing. I'm going to start to heat this up and attempt to blow it out on the center fire here. I'm going to have to turn up the propane quite a bit, being such a big piece of glass. It might end up reducing that reactive color which will make it turn more to like earthy tones. Also to note, I am using an oxygen concentrator, a 10 liter per minute. In my experience, it is a little bit more difficult working the reactive colors on a concentrator. I don't think the purity is as high as a cylinder. Also, the pressure won't run as high as a cylinder unless you boost it with extra equipment. But besides that, with the oxygen concentrators, you can't really beat the accessibility and the lack of a rental fee. And that's the biggest complaint I hear about cylinders, is that the rental and filling fee just increases all the time. And so it's a little bit too large to do all at once, so I'm going to break it down into two sections and then blow out the middle and combine them. And so I puffed it out a little bit too much there. You don't want to puff out the walls too thin. You can melt it back down, but sometimes it does mess with the color a little bit. So I probably should have just puffed it about half that size, melted it back down a little bit, and then puffed it out to its final size. Sometimes it's better to do it uh, incrementally, kind of a slower process than trying to puff it all out at one time. So the shape got a little bit weird here. The walls were a little too thin. So I'm giving it a tiny puff just to get it back into a sphere. And then I'm gonna keep condensing it back down. And now I'm just gonna heat up the top section and blow that out also for the two section puff. It's more proper to open up the bottom and attach a new blow tube and take off the old one to puff out the top. 
but I'm just doing a fast method here. And now with that top puffed out enough, I'm going to go into the middle section and puff that out. And one thing I forgot to mention, although a vessel of this size is possible on the small torch like the Bethlehem Alpha and an oxygen concentrator, it's not the most practical. If you're looking to make a hundred or two of them to sell, then uh, you want to invest in a two-stage torch instead. So that reactive color looks like it gave me a little bit of blue and greens, but a lot of brown and yellow. And so kind of being a first vessel of the year, a little bit of a warm up, I thought I would experiment a little bit and put some large dots on it. Looking back at it, it probably wasn't the best idea being how uh, big it's getting and how I'm sticking to the alpha. But it's like one of those things, you know, once you put one dot on it, you got to put eight more dots. And so what I'm trying to do here is very similar to the glass dice. When I make glass dice, I like to put little windows on each side and then melt them in and then put the dots on top of the window. And so I normally melt the entire piece all at once and this is too large to do that. And so I'm trying to melt the dots individually, but it's kind of condensing the wall in a little bit. So I'm having to puff it out again. So I'm trying to use the paddle a little bit to flatten the dots, I'm trying to get them melted in, but it's just not happening. I do like the way the dots look when they're kind of pushed in. So I'm gonna just kind of change it up and start pushing all the dots in. And that is art a lot of times. A big work in progress. Sometimes it's less about how much value comes to your work and more about how much progress you've made. And so I'm going to flatten the bottom a little bit so it can stand upright. I have to heat the bottom and then push it against a hard surface like a graphite pad. And so I'm going to do it properly here by bringing it down on my desk. And I want to hold my blow tube as plumb as I can. That way it'll stand up straight. I'll flash just a tiny bit of heat to warm up my claw grabbers and then grab onto the piece. And I highly recommend the claw grabbers, like a stainless steel pair. I ended up starting with some aluminum barbecue tongs and they broke more pieces than they saved. I mean, I couldn't hold on to anything for any amount of time. And so I took off my blow tube without popping a hole first, which ended up sealing the vessel closed. This can be a problem. It happens from time to time. So I'll show you what to do. I'm pulling off glass from one area to thin up that wall. And because it's sealed up, it's actually sucking that wall in as a vessel is cooling like a vacuum. I'll get the area molten, push a rod into it, and then pull it out very quickly like that. And now that you have the wall on the outside to make it easy, you can just get some glass snips and just snip the end off of it. But here it was thin enough that it just ripped open in the flame. I'm just pulling off a little bit of extra glass, trying to even up the hole before I flare it open into a jar. And so I'm going to start holding it down as I rotate to allow gravity to kind of help me pull it into a cylinder shape. And then I'll go in with the jacks to flare out a lip. And so my claw grabbers came a little bit off center there. The grabbers can't beat the stability of a punty on the bottom, but they do speed up the process a bit. So they are great for production. And so with the slightly odd shape and those outside dots pushed in like that, I want to get it in the kiln as fast as I can here. And here it is. I think it's looking pretty good for my first project of 2020. It's got a lot of color to it, and remember that all came from one rod. It's pretty big too. It holds about a third of a cup. 
All right, we've reached the end of the video for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to take a moment to like and subscribe. Also share on the other feeds like Facebook. I really appreciate the help. Thank you again, my friends. And always remember, stay melty.